everyone and welcome to What's in My Drug Box where we're going to talk in depth about every medication that I carry in my drug box. Today, episode one, we're going to talk about adenosine. Adenosine is an antiarrhythmic. In order to understand antiarrhythmics, First, you need to understand cardiac action potential, so if you don't, I suggest you watch that video first. Antiarrhythmics are divided into five classes called the Vaughn Williams classes. Adenosine is a class 5 antiarrhythmic. Class 5 antiarrhythmics have a variable mechanism of action, meaning that each medication has its own unique mechanism of action. Adenosine is indicated for patients in supraventricular tachycardia. It's contraindicated in patients with a known allergy to the drug, asthma, bronchospasm, a second or third degree heart block, sick sinus syndrome, and tachycardia induced by a drug or poison. It is a class C teratogen. Adenosine works by binding to the adenosine alpha-1 receptor. When this happens in the sinus node, impulse formation is temporarily slowed. When adenosine binds to the alpha-1 receptor, it activates the GI protein. GI proteins, also known as G inhibitory proteins, inhibit the L-type calcium channels which limits the amount of calcium that's allowed to enter a cardiac cell and therefore causes a decrease in conduction velocity that's most profound at the AV node. Now we're going to talk about effects and adverse effects of adenosine. If adenosine is effective, the patient will be converted out of SVT to a more normal rhythm. That can include converting the patient to a normal sinus rhythm, but the patient may also go into a second degree heart block, a third degree heart block, or a systole for no more than one minute before converting to a more normal rhythm. Adverse effects include the patient may report a feeling of doom, chest pressure, throat tightness, or numbness, and you, because adenosine is a potent vasodilator, may notice flushing. Adenosine has an ultra short half-life of only five seconds to 20 seconds, so it needs to be given as quickly as possible, which is why it's given intravenous SLAM, meaning to push the plunger on the syringe as quickly as you possibly can. It's also given at a site that's proximal to central circulation, such as in the antecubit. Prior to administration, the extremities should be raised to give the medication the best chance of reaching central circulation and the heart. Before I talk about doses, first I want to remind everyone that's watching to please take a look at your own protocols prior to administering any medication to a patient because the dose that I tell you may be different from what your protocol says. That being said, the adult dose that I have here is the recommendation of the American Heart Association as of 2010 and both the adult and pediatric doses are what I actually give under my own protocols. So for an adult in SVT, I give six milligrams followed by a fluid bolus. If that doesn't convert the patient in one to two minutes, I give 12 milligrams followed by another fluid bolus. If that still doesn't convert the patient in one to two minutes, I give another 12 milligrams followed by another fluid bolus 
for a total of 30 milligrams. For pediatric patients in SVT, those who weigh more than 50 kilograms receive the same dose as an adult. Those who weigh less than 50 kilograms receive 0.1 milligrams per kilogram with a maximum of six milligrams followed by a fluid bolus. If that does not convert the patient in one to two minutes, they receive 0.2 milligrams per kilogram, a maximum of 12 milligrams, followed by another fluid bolus. And if that still doesn't convert the patient, they receive 0.2 milligrams per kilogram, maximum of 12 milligrams, followed by another fluid bolus. If you'd like to learn more about adenosine, please feel free to check out the links below. Otherwise, have a great night.